Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have x to the power x equals 2 over 3 to the power 8 over 9. And we're going to be solving for x values. Wait a minute. Did I say x values? How many x values are there? We're going to find out. These equations are interesting. Uh, we're also going to be looking at the graph. Uh, hopefully, we can see some intersection points. Anyways, let's get started. So, first of all, I want you to think about how many solutions we might have to an equation like this. All right? Let's proceed with the solution. Now, we have this equation x to the x. So, the base and the exponent are equal. But on the right-hand side, that's not the case, which is not good. But we have hope because we can turn the right-hand side into something like c to the power c. So our goal, hopefully you can see what I'm talking about, the goal is to get uh, the right-hand side into this format so we can conclude with x equals c. But again, the million-dollar question is, is that going to be the only solution? And my answer would be, it depends. Okay, let's find out. So I'm going to go ahead and manipulate the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and write two-thirds to the power of four-ninths as follows. Now, one thing that might give you a clue about this problem is if you square two over three, you get four over nine. What does that have to do with eight over nine? It's half of that. Make sense? Okay. Hopefully, you get the idea. Half kind of turns into a square if you think about the properties of uh, exponents. And those are very important. I'm planning to make a video about that. I don't know when, but hopefully sometime soon. So I'm going to go ahead and write the 8 over 9 as 2 times 4 over 9 for the reason I just mentioned. And I'm going to put the t inside, the 2 I mean, not the t. So we can write this as 2 over 3 to the power 2 and then that to the power 4 over 9. Why does this work? Because we have a rule that says a to the power b to the power c equals a to the power bc. Of course, a to the bc can also turn into a to the power bc, but a to the bc is equal to a to the cb, which can also turn into a to the power c to the power b. So you can basically do a lot of things with the exponents. If you know the properties, that's what we did here. First, we break down 8 ninths, and then we take one of the numbers inside so that it can act as a square. And why are we doing all of this? There's a good reason, right? The motivation is if you square 2 thirds, you get 4 ninths. Aha! Uh -huh. We got the base and the exponent. They're equal. Awesome. What else can you ask for, right? So now we're going to go ahead and apply the property we talked about. Or in other words, we can say that, okay, x equals 4 ninths immediately follows. But again, the million dollar question comes up. Is that the only solution? Well, at this point, we know that at least we have one solution. When do we have a single solution? Can we have more than one solution? Can there be no solutions? Those are good questions. When I show you the graph, hopefully uh, those questions will be answered. And again, we can talk about those. But with a visual, it's much easier. And by the way, when I say graph, I'm talking about the graph of y equals x to the power x, something that looks like this. Okay. And what is so typical about this graph is that it starts at 0, 1, and then it makes a minimum at some point, which we're going to find out, and then it'll increase. So it decreases on an interval and increases on another. Make sense? And of course, it goes on forever. And why do we have a closed dot here at 0, 1? Because 0 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. If you don't believe that, you can go ahead and check out my video. I made a video about uh, 0 to the power 0. Okay? Awesome. Now, we found one solution. Can we find another one? And the answer in this case is yes. Let me show you how. This is pretty interesting. And these numbers are actually really, really cool. Can we find another pair of numbers that give us something nice like this? Give it a try. You know, something to think about, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to manipulate the exponent because I can't really do much with the base, but here's what I can do. Notice that 8 over 9 can be written as 8 over 27 times 3. Why does this work? Let me show you. 
8 over 9 can be written as 8 times 1 over 9. Now, if you go ahead and expand this, like multiply the top and the bottom by 3, this becomes 8 times 3 over 27, which basically gives you 8 over 27 times 3. Same idea. And if you wanted to prove this, it's easy, but you could hopefully clearly see what I'm talking about. Now, why did we do this? Because we're going to use the same trick. Something similar. We're going to take the 3 this time and we'll put it inside. Tuck it in, just like the 2. So now this is going to become 2 over 3 to the power 3, and then that to the power 8 over 27. Guess what? This trick works one more time. Isn't that awesome? What is 2 over 3 to the third power? It is 8 over 27, and now we got the same base and the same exponent. Awesome. Which means that x equals 8 over 27 is another solution. We already got x equals 4 over 9, so now we got two solutions. Can we get more than two solutions? Start, like, keep milking this? Okay, not really. We're done. But the million dollar question again is, when do we have re two real solutions? Can we have no solutions? Let's go ahead and take a look, to look at the graph, but before that, I want to show you a little bit of calculus, shall I? So, we're going to do the following. Suppose f of x is equal to x to the power x. Using the exponential function, I want to write this as e to the power x ln x. If you think about it, e to the ln x to the power x, a to the ln x is x, so this is e to, uh, x to the power x. Make sense? Now, why did I write it like this? Because I don't have a rule to be able to differentiate this. There's no rule for uh, when the base and the exponent are both variables. One of them has to be constant, unfortunately, right? I mean, you can come up with a rule like uh, f of x to the power g of x, obviously by using natural logs, but that would be complicated. A little bit, maybe. So this is better. Every time write it as an exponential and with the um, Euler's number. And now we can differentiate. How do you differentiate e to the power u? u is a function of x, by the way. Uh, it's e to the u multiplied by u prime. And u prime is basically the derivative of the inside uh, from chain rule. So, in other words, the derivative of x ln x. What's the derivative of x ln x? As a product rule, the derivative of x times ln x plus the derivative of ln x times the first function x. There you go. Easy. x cancels out. We end up with ln x plus 1. Some people write it as 1 plus ln x, which uh, looks a little better, but no big deal. Now, we want f prime to be 0, obviously. And if f prime is 0, right, then what happens? We get the critical points. Usually, where we have a horizontal tangent, that indicates maxima or minima, right? And from here, e to the power of something cannot be negative, obviously, right? So, this needs to be... I'm sorry, did I say negative? I meant zero. Okay. Only this can be zero, which means ln x equals negative one, which means x equals e to the power of negative one or one over e. So, that's my critical point. And if x is equal to one over e, y is going to be... or f of x is going to be f of 1 over e, which is 1 over e to the power 1 over e. Remember, our function is x to the power x. So at 1 over e, comma 1 over e to the power 1 over e, I do have a critical point, which happens to be the minimum. You know why? Because this function doesn't have a, a maximum, right? Especially a local max we don't have. So we don't have an absolute max either, but, you know, we have a minimum. So this is a minimum, which means what? Here's the thing. If your y value, and by the way, this is 1 over e to the power of 1 over e. I hope you can see that. It's kind of small. And this is 1 over e. So if your y value is greater than that, but less than 1, you're going to have two intersection points. So let me give you the values. What is 1 over e to the power of 1 over e? 1 over e to the 1 over e is actually approximately... 0 0.692. What about 2 thirds to the power 8 ninths or 4 ninths to the power 4 ninths, however you want to write it, is approximately 0 0.697. Awesome. So my value on the right hand side is actually greater than that, which means we're going to have a horizontal line that will intersect at two points. There you go. That's why we have two solutions. Let me write it in a more formal way. I know some people are going to be like, this is not rigorous. So we have two real solutions to x to the x equals c to the c. 
if if c is between 1 over e to the 1 over e and 1 okay and 1 over e to the 1 over e can also be written as e to the power negative 1 over e if you want to write it a little nicer wow these values are pretty close don't you think yes they are and you'll see that in the graph that i'm about to show you which is nicer than the one that i just drew okay here we go the graph of y equals x to the x intersected by the horizontal line y equals four ninths to the four ninths or two two thirds to the eight ninths same thing right and we have two intersection points as you can see therefore we have two solutions and this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye